This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the place to go to if you want to set up your own slick looking website or online store. So the FX3 was the A7S3, but in a different, more video geek body. This time around, we've got the FX30, which is practically the same thing. It's Sony's super sensible, practical grey brick with multi-thread options. No EVF, but it does have a tilty flippy screen for vlogging type people. Yes, vloggy people and whatever we are, but there's more to know about the FX30 than the mere flip screen. The half size elephant in the room is the APS-C size sensor that has been chucked in place of where full frame sensor usually sits. Keep talking about the FX3 like you'd rather have full frame. Yeah. Why? Full frame? Yeah, but this is equivalent to 1635. Yeah. How lightweight is that? The 1635 is... would be bigger, would be heavier. I mean, the same, the same as, um, would you pick between A7 or A6500 or something? It kind of like, you see, um, A, A, A7. Come on, not everyone shits their pants with excitement about full frame. Half the sensor doesn't make it half the camera. Comparisons shouldn't be made with the FX3, although that is probably the only Sony camera that it can be compared to. Before for video, I think you only had the A6600, A64, A65, yes. whatever. I've forgotten which one's which. Yeah, I think the, 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 the good one is A66. Yeah, but still the thing that characterised pretty much most of them was the rolling shutter was pretty bad. Mm. But this has got the same processor as the FX3 and the A7S3. With a smaller sensor. With a smaller sensor. More megapixels. So I don't know if the rolling shutter is any good. Short answer, good. They look pretty similar. Long answer, the FX30 seems to have a little bit more wobble, perhaps because it has more megapixels. It is 6K oversampled. Still very good overall, but look, I did say they shouldn't really be compared, and I'm going to tell you why right now. The FX3 is basically an A7S3, no EVF, chucked mm. into his body. This, there's no other camera within Sony's uh, crop sensor lineup, which is this. I mean, this is half the price of the FX3, so... That's quite a lot then. Yeah. That's a lot of camera for your money, and if you're in the States, given the state of the UK pound, by the time you watch this, you could probably buy a ton of the UK FX40 cameras for your US money. And it does pretty much the same thing, just with a, yeah. a smaller sensor. I like it. I like it a lot. I might get this. I like it. After vlogging for, for a few years now, I kind of feel like APS-C is a good, happy medium in terms of, okay, it's not micro four thirds look, it's too much depth of field, yeah. and it's like video kind of look. Yeah. Apart from the depth of field difference, the video footage from both matches up nicely. Maybe the S Cinetone looks a little less vibrant on the FX30, but nothing a push on the saturation slider won't fix. It even got Locke's camera tingly bits tingling. Just watch. Why did you use this today? I'm so... Oh my god, the AF is so good. But look, I guess once you go Sony AF, you won't go... Oh, I can't think of anything to rhyme with it. But it's hard to do without it once you're used to the speed and accuracy of picking up subjects and tracking for video, especially when you ended up using a Panasonic. And I can touch anything on the, on the, on the yeah. screen. And then it's a strike kit. I mean, look at that. It's just, it's just focusing on your eyes now. Yeah. Don't know why it's not picking up my, my eyes. Are, there we are. It's looking great. Uh, it's on you now. Oh, <laughs> OK. Because you are more center now, I think. And it's so light. Whether you're getting into filmmaking or you're a vlogger, a body and lens like the 10 to 20 PZ fits in the hand so easy, so nicely balanced. It's so nicely balanced, one hand can hold it easily for vlogging and use the same hand to hit record and toggle the PZ zoom rock at the same time. And the PZ seems like a fantastic lens to pair with the FX30, vlogging or not. And this power zoom ring is pretty good actually. Because when I, when I use a ring, it's quite natural, it feels really natural. I mean, of course, oh. if, I, if I can't do a uh, quest, but if I just use the zoom ring, it's really, it's really natural. 
I mean, usually this power zoom, when you use a ring, it's feel yeah. detached yeah, from yeah. the algorithm or yeah. acceleration. It whatever. takes, a, I don't know, a little bit too much time yeah. to get going. Yeah, a little bit delay, a little bit lag, and then it's just robotic. But this is... Less robotic, perhaps? Anyway, the PZ is a great thing, although it has meant that they had to do that optical steady shot in the lens as a result. What about when you're walking and talking? Walking and talking, vlogging. That's that's a big thing. Because because I, I like walking and talking. Hopefully stabilisation is all right, isn't it? Because uh, Locke's just holding it single-handedly. Like a bass. Yeah, it looks all right on screen. <laughs> that's the misleading thing, isn't it? Sometimes it looks all right. Yeah. I think they must have stabilisation for just whatever goes on the screen. And then on the memory card, it's totally, <laughs> totally different. <laughs> just, just, just trick you up. <laughs> That's, a mess. That's what help makes you buy the camera. The stabilisation isn't as crazy good as Panasonic's, but there are fixes, like their Catalyst Browse software. So I've just arrived at Chessington Go Ape car park, waiting for Locke. Not in time, that's, that's not a surprise. But I'm just wondering what he's going to wear because, you know, we're climbing treetops, but he doesn't have too much variety in his wardrobe. If he turns up with his shoes, jeans and shirt. It's gonna be hilarious. Log is here. He's driving in. So yes, we are going to be doing a bit of tree climbing. I mean, they're allowing us to climb the trees. We're paying for it. We're not just going up some random trees. Uh, let's see what Locke has come dressed in. Has he come in in his sports clothing? Let's find out. I'm dressed in his normal clothing. <laughs> That's my normal. I think <laughs> this, this is my normal uh, tree formal. climbing. Tree climbing clothes. <laughs> tree climbing. <laughs> I thought I'd bring this lens out. This is a 11 mm 1.8 to see if I can get a shallow depth of field because it's not full frame, obviously. Because I complain it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a bokeh. No, no complain. But anyway, go ape. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Let's do this. Active stabilisation does improve the shakes, but with a 1.1 times crop, the Catalyst Browse does the best job and is totally fine for stabilising a couple of clips, but it took 4 minutes 50 seconds to stabilise and export a 1 minute 47 second clip. If I did a whole project, that's a lot of time. The streamlined as it's designed to be, it's still an extra step in your workflow. But if you're not walking around, just staying on the spot and taking some handheld shots, the in-camera stabilisation works well enough. Oh, you can you can put LUT in it. You can bake it in dual base ISO, 800 to and 2500, 10-bit 4K. I'm not going to compare noise levels of FX30 with the FX3, but I think the FX30 noise performance is pretty good. I don't doubt that the full-frame FX3 will look cleaner, but if you're making do with the FX30 instead of the FX3, there really isn't much to worry about missing out on. Of course. So the 60p, the 60 frames per second is a 1.04 times crop. 1.0. Well, what the bloody hell does it look like? Well, it bloody well looks like this. It cuts off the crusts. Yeah, the FX3 wouldn't crop the 4K 60 video, only the 4K 120. But if we're talking about 4K 120, that's where it gets more drastic with the FX30. And the 120 is 1.6 times crop. Not too bad. I honestly think they could have just made it without a crop. But they have to make it. <laughs> Otherwise, who's going to buy? Um, yeah, that's the thing. A smaller sensor should be. Yeah, same better performance. Same processor as the FX3, the A7S3. And then do less. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So they must have held something back. All right, let's not get too cynical. Same body as the FX3, half the sensor, crop in 4K 60p. That's all the negatives. Positives? you're not going to get an APS-C camera as good for video as this is, at this price. Well, the X-H2S will be the FX30's biggest competitor. Similar price, competitive video specs. Arguably a little bit better in some respects with the ProRes internal and no 4K60 crop, but the Sony is, well, Sony. But it won't overheat, it's got a fan. Smaller. So I think there's a pretty good, it's cheaper than the X-H2. So I think they're on to a winner of this, especially given that lots of people shoot Sony already. 
and a lot of people like Sony. The Fujifilm, although it's got great video features, it's still something about it which is not going to be perfect, especially the auto ISO stepping. Yeah. It just way. works with one lens, isn't it? Yeah. The ste stepless um, aperture changing. Step the aperture change. With the X-H2S, you're buying top of the line. With the FX30, it could be your top tier camera if you want to, or a backup, or a stepping stone to a more pro-grade body. Sony has nailed it because it's part of their massive, mature ecosystem. There's lenses, and such perfectly formed APS-C lenses too, not the crazy big Fujifilm lenses. Whether it's the form factor or Sony's AF, or maybe you just like their colors. Even if you're usually full frame only, it's hard not to like what the FX30 offers. It offers more, even when it has less. If you want to set up your own domain, online retail space, or website, it's super simple to get started and make your next move with Squarespace. With an easy to use interface filled with loads of templates and backed up with 24 seven customer service, you can try it out with a 14 day free trial and get 10% off your first order with this link and discount code. On a talking head like this, head and shadow, head and shadow, <laughs> shoulder, uh, kind of knees and toes. Someone, someone should make a like one one eye uh, goggle. Just, just just one eye wirelessly. Yeah. So you put it on and you're like a pirate. Ah. You can have a pirate's hat as well. You should make some some Chinese like ex soon should make one. <laughs> some ch some Chinese some company. Chinese like ex <laughs> some Chinese company should make one. I mean they they yeah. make all those wireless uh, monitor uh, what transmitter whatever. Yeah. Make one that's just. One eye eyepiece now. Who, who's that for? It. For me, like I <laughs> just make it for lock. When I'm filming, yeah, like this. When I'm filming, just hold it like here. I can like, I can close his eyes, and I'm looking at the. So window. you have to have an, uh, an eyepiece permanently on just one eye. So you'd be looking at you'd be walking and looking at the world with one eye looking at what's through your your lens. Yeah. And what? Well, just yeah. just like you're using a UVF on the camera. Yeah, but you don't go around like walking like this, do you? All the time. That would be disorientating. Not all the time when when you're filming. Right. Okay. I think it's a niche. If you had to explain it in longer than 10 seconds, then it's not a very good idea. Because you don't get it. Okay. <laughs> so some Chinese make it now for lock. Some Chinese. <laughs>